fun. Fashion felines. Join spa living and style expert Candy Holiday as she trips through her days while trying to flourish, look fab and have a blast, even when life gets in her way. Let's make every day feel like a holiday with Candy. Candy, what are you doing? Hey y'all, welcome to Life's a Holiday, the show where we try to bring that vacay vibe home every day. And I am so stoked today. I cannot wait to tell you about our two special guests. We have Phil Kogan from The Amazing Race. He's one of the creators and the host. And Samantha Brown from The Travel Channel. And they are two of my all-time favorite people in the world. And I don't really get gaga over celebrities or anything that much. But I love these two so much because they have... Not only did I have my dream job, so maybe a little jealous, (laughs) but they also have this like zest for life. They've overcome a lot of obstacles and they still just forge ahead. I was seriously psyched when I heard that they were going to be at the LA Travel Show, which we were invited to cover for the podcast. I mean, how cool is it that we get to launch our holiday makers? Yes, holiday maker. (laughs) That's what I call anybody that just goes after what they want, that's happy, that creates a life that they love. And definitely Phil Kogan and Samantha Brown are that. And I can't take full credit though for coming up with the term holiday maker because literally in England, that's what they call people that go on vacation. They're like a holiday maker. (laughs) Isn't that just so fab? And I am so enamored with people like this. I'm always reading about them and studying them and just wanting to emulate, you know, that kind of spirit they have that we're going to do a whole series on holiday makers or called holiday makers. So watch for more episodes and wait until you hear about how Phil has come up with this incredible philosophy and what inspired him to come up with it that just kind of helps him focus and go after what he wants without hesitation and Samantha gave us some really great advice on her favorite spa and her favorite spa treatment so yay pull up a chair grab a cocktail and get ready to be inspired and oh my gosh before I forget I also discovered two new spas to tell you all about one is in Denali National Park in Alaska and the other is in Zanzibar (laughs) like Ooh, like so tropical and fabulous. I can't wait to tell you guys all about those. But before we get into that, let me tell you about this crazy recipe that I tried from Pinterest. So do you all do Pinterest? I am addicted to it. I love it. So there's something about putting those pretty pictures and all the boards and just creating this just beautiful, happy, healthy life. It just really just draws me in. (laughs) And I came up with this kind of crazy plan to actually try the things on Pinterest. And especially because I kept seeing pins on my board and I'd be like, you know, what is it? Why does this have like 20,000 repins? It must be like super amazing. (laughs) And I was just like, I have all these great ideas on here and I really, really, really want to try some. So I've been kind of like on this mission. And as you can imagine, sometimes they turn out really great. This is what I found. They either turn out super amazing or they're like huge flops. And one that I tried out recently was for this, and don't don't gag, don't gag yet, (laughs) this cauliflower oatmeal. And I know, I know, I know you're you're thinking, what on earth? (laughs) Cauliflower oatmeal, ah. And, but cauliflower is one of those things, it's a great chameleon vegetable. I make tater tots from it. I have a recipe for fettuccine alfredo that is amazing and it doesn't have any cream in it. All really good, all sound kind of crazy, so you just never know. And plus, I'm all about eating more veggies at breakfast. It's one of my little secrets that I try to do. The more veggies and healthy things you put in your body, especially earlier in the day, it just like sets that tone. It kind of keeps that, that, healthy habit thing just rolling throughout the day. And I'm sort of somewhat paleo. I try to eat more protein 
and not as many carbs. I used to be like the carb queen. That was practically half my diet. It was so bad. But anywho, this pin had 8,000 repins. The picture looked, of course, gorgeous. Y'all, no, so, so bad, so bad. <laughs> it, it had, I mean, listen to these ingredients. It had like brown sugar, coconut milk, apples, nutmeg, all kinds of yummy things. It almost reminded me of that Quaker oatmeal, like the maple brown sugar Quaker oatmeal. It should have been good, right? It should have been good, but no, it was like wallpaper based. It looked like wallpaper paste. It had like this like thick, gloppy consistency of wallpaper paste. And it tasted like cauliflower with sugar on it. So the cauliflower wasn't disguised at all. And I'll put a few of the pins for the cauliflower oats or notes in the show notes. Y'all can have a look and see for yourself. And if you want to try it, go for it. If it comes out good, let me know. And if y'all have any Pinterest made me do it stories, whether they were flops or they were just fabulous, let me know. Go on over to lifeaholiday.com and send me um, a shout out on our contact form. But now I just can't wait. I'm just busting to tell you all about why I got to meet Samantha Brown at the LA Travel Show. And if you don't watch Travel Channel, she is just one of the hosts of their shows and she is so fun and amazing. She tries all kinds of crazy new things. She always looks adorable. She has like this really, she's like tiny and has these cute little dresses and fun little outfits. And like I said, her style's so great that she even has her own luggage line now. So a true holiday maker for sure. And I got to ask her, Um, some questions from the podium. So I didn't get to actually like, you know, do a recorded interview, but I just had to tell you all that she told me that her favorite spa, and you know, she's been to tons, is the 10,000 Waves. And that's in New Mexico. I'll put a link in the show notes for you. And she said her favorite treatment that she's ever had there is Watsu. And Watsu is where you have a massage under the water. Like not totally, but like you're floating on your back and then the massage therapist massages you in the water. That's one that I've never had, but doesn't that just sound so dreamy? Just perfect, especially because like I love to soak in the tub, so I can just imagine like what if someone's giving me a massage in the bathtub, (laughs) in a pool, it would be even more amazing. Or some spas like do watsu in the ocean, so that might be that might be a little scary for me though. I, I think I'd be sitting there just thinking, you know, what if some shark or some crazy animal <laughs> comes up from underneath? But but definitely try Watsu. And Samantha was just all over it. She just couldn't say enough positive things about her experience there. So thumbs up, ten thousand waves if you're listening. And while I was at the travel show after I talked with Samantha. I met this really cool woman who started a lodge that has some spa spa aspect to it in Zanzibar. Like Zanzibar. Don't you just love saying that? It just sounds so exotic and like mystical, like, like a story, almost like a fairy tale. My name is Elise Hagedorn. I own, together with my husband, Unguja Lodge on Zanzibar. Unguja. Unguja Lodge, yes. And it's located on one of the more pristine beaches of Zanzibar in the south. And it's, it's at Menai Bay Conservation Area. So it has beautiful sea life, beautiful, um, yeah, beautiful uh, feel. And it's all very intimate and very... Private. Yes, and um, how many, um, it's a small lodge, isn't it? Yeah. How many guests can you have at a time? We have 12 what we call villas, uh-huh. so depending a little bit on how many families and how many couples, uh, but on average, when it's full, it has about 30 people. Oh, wow, and so and from the lodge, you can arrange the faris and other activities? Yes, well, on Zanzibar, we do mainly the water activities and 
more cultural activities like visiting the local village together with our guide Rashid. Uh, you can visit the Stone Town, which is a UNESCO cultural heritage uh, site. Um, you can visit the spice farms where Zanzibar is famous for. It's called the Spice Island. Oh, okay. So that's, uh, yeah, we can do a lot of nice trips. Wow. And so, um, and your spa is how many um, treatment rooms and what kind of like local treatments do you offer? We don't have really a, like a spa building, but okay. we have a, a local lady from uh, from Zanzibar. Her name is Erika, and she does um, massages in the private villas. They're so huge, and oh. they have sea view, so on the terrace, on yeah. the portable. That oh, she will yeah. give you a, a beautiful local massage. Oh, that's better. I think that's better. I love it when it's in your own villa. Yeah, that yeah. it's more private. It's very private, yes. exactly. And and um, what does like she use um, local? I think you're yeah. telling me about the Swahili head massage. Yeah. So how does she incorporate the local yeah. traditions into that? So, like Zanzibar is a is is a cultural mix of of many people, influences, cultures, etc. because it was, used to be a trade hub. So that you will, uh, in the massages, you will notice many Indian influences, and that is combined with the local uh, spices and local oil that she uses for the massage. So for instance, she will use, the basis will be coconut oil, because that is abundantly available on Zanzibar and people cook, do everything with it, cook with it, <laughs> massage with it, um, whatever. And then she adds different spices for different massages. So she will use different spices for the head massages, different massa uh, spices for the back massages. Oh, and that's, wow. that is the knowledge that they mm -hmm. learn from generation right. to generation. Oh, that's amazing. That's so wonderful. I can't wait to come and visit. <laughs> and and speaking of that, like how um, how far in advance do you think people would need to reserve? Like, do you stay fairly booked up um, if they want, or and how would they? Would they come to your website or they can um, they can come to the website? They can uh, book. Usually, um, uh, people in California will book through Infinite Safari Adventures. Okay, uh, that is located in. Um, in, in LA, okay. in Studio City, so that's very easy to organize. I would suggest, especially for the for the busier seasons, start looking at it half a year in advance. Wow! For the for the more quiet periods, mm -hmm. outside the the school holidays, I would say you don't need so much time. But it's a okay. small lodge, so yeah. you know it can be booked up. And if you want the room of your preference, then yeah, then yeah. I would say like half a year. Wow, that's excellent. Okay, well, good to know. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. Doesn't that just sound so exotic? I know after listening to her talk about it, it almost makes me want to just like go open a spa <laughs> or at least go visit hers. She's got such a passion, she and her husband, for it. And that's just, that's the kind of thing that makes your experiences when you go to these spas just incomparable. So definitely the Anguja um, Lodge in Zanzibar, on my list, check. <laughs> and that is not the only spa that I discovered at the LA Travel Show. I was speaking to some gentlemen at, about Alaska travel, and I've always wanted to go to Alaska. And I, I feel like it's just such a, a rugged, beautiful, I just know it would be a really breathtaking place to go visit. And there is a, the, at Denali National Park, where they have a big, the big Denali Lodge, they also have a spa there called the Nest Spa. And I got to speak to one of the managers all about it. Hey y'all, it's Candy. Um, we are at the LA Travel and Adventure Show, and I found another amazing spa. This is just you guys. Um, it's actually in Denali National Park in Alaska. Y'all, that's on my list to visit a spa in Alaska. And I was talking to Christopher. Um, he is the general manager. So, um, Christopher, when is the best time of year to come to um, Denali, to the spa in Denali? 
Well, I would say that any time is really a good time to come to a spa in Denali. But specifically, I would say probably August 15th to the end of the year, September 15th. We're only open for four months, so the, the best time to come, August 15th, September 15th, you get the, the wildlife in the park, the fall colors in the park, uh, the beautiful landscape, and opportunity to see Northern Lights as well. Yeah, and you tell me, like, you do even photography courses, so you can get out there and really capture it and keep that experience. So if somebody wants to book uh, a visit, uh, where do they, can they go online? Well, they can find us at www.alaskadenalitravel.com. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. No problem. Oh, I'm so psyched to go there and visit the Denali, the Nest Spa at the Denali Lodge. And you know, it's funny because I'm not like the world's biggest outdoor girl like I mean not camper like I love to go outside I love being outside and like walking on the beach and going for hikes and things but I'm not like you know I don't do haven't done things like rock climbing or some of the more extremey kind of things like I like my my pampering too along with my nature but at the Denali Lodge and Spa it sounds like they do a lot of activities that are fun and doable, like dog sledding, and the hiking sounds amazing. It would definitely be a great spa to like take your man to because there are like all those activities. It's not just where you're gonna go and do massages, although they do have a treatment at their spa just for hikers, especially designed for your like feet and legs when they're tired after a day of hiking. So the Nest Spa, and I will have links to both in Unguja and to the Nest on our in our show notes. So be sure to check those out if you're thinking about a spa vacay coming up. And if you are, lucky you. <laughs> but next to the PS de Resistance, I am so jazzed to tell you all, or to introduce uh, my interview segment with Phil Kogan of The Amazing Race. And I learned about Phil is he has this unique philosophy towards life, and he calls it NOW. And that means it stands for no opportunity wasted. Isn't that fabulous? Like just such something to always remember, like what a a go-getter somebody like him is. That's what he does. He comes up with this acronym that he just has in his mind now. So instead of like procrastinating, which I know I'm a terrible procrastinator, that's something like that that's easy to remember and just kind of gives you that extra little bit of motivation, especially when things seem kind of difficult or undoable. Andy also had a really great story about one time when he's had troubles in his travels, which obviously he has, and he this is a little incident he had in, at the airport. And so, without further ado, here is Phil Kogan. Um, I did. I did get held up at an airport once. Uh, we were in Ukraine, and they didn't like my New Zealand passport. Most of the time, traveling with a New Zealand passport is actually a good thing because they kind of see us like it's it's sort of like a Swiss passport or something. You know, they kind of like, oh, New Zealand, uh, you guys are tucked away at the bottom of the world there. Yeah, go ahead. Um, but anyway, for whatever reason, they didn't like my passport. And so it was like 1 o'clock in the morning. We were arriving um, about eight hours before the teams were arriving. And they took me off to a holding room. It was dark, and there were some plastic chairs near the entrance of this room. I could just smell that there were people in there, but I didn't know that there were people in there. And the lights were off. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, <laughs> smells like a lot of people in this room. And... So I uh, decided to make myself comfortable on the plastic chairs because I knew I was going to be there overnight. And the chairs had those handles. So the only way to lie down uh, instead of lying on the concrete floor was to get myself through the plastic handles, which, you know, then, so I slotted myself through the plastic handles and, and then I had my backpack. I took everything out of it and put the, you know, that on where my hip was on the plastic and I fell asleep. When I woke up the next morning, I realized I was in this huge room about the size of where you were all sitting here with like there were people all stacked all the way back into this room i had absolutely no idea thankfully uh there was somebody at the embassy in in ukraine who was a huge amazing race fan she (laughs) found out that i was stuck in there and stayed up all night and miraculously managed to get me whatever documentation i needed to get out of there 
I had no time to shoot any of the challenges. I rushed to the pit stop and greeted the team. They did not beat me. Once again, they did not beat me. I got there before them. Um, my love of travel and, and, and doing lots of different things really comes from a personal philosophy of mine called No Opportunity Wasted, or now for short. Uh, it happened after a near-death experience at 19, my first hostings job. Uh, I was working on a show where there were three hosts, and people would write in and get us to go and do really interesting things. And I found myself diving uh, down 120 feet down to a, a ship that was a 22,000 ton ship that had sank and it was down on its starboard side. I was, I still am, incredibly claustrophobic, but of course I didn't tell anybody because it was 19, I'm so tough, you know, nothing can hurt me. But this guy took me into this ship, 120 feet down into the bowels of the ship, further and further and further. And the idea was that we were going to go into the ballroom. If you imagine this whole room with tables where the ballroom was and the dance floor and everything, imagine this whole thing tipped up like that, tables bolted now on what was the floor is now the wall, and the idea was we were going to go in and we were going to wait for the crew to meet us so that we, so the crew didn't stir up the silt. So I'm holding onto the table and we don't see the crew and my dive buddy signals to wait and then he disappears and I'm holding on to this table 120 feet down in the shipwreck and I panicked I just majorly panicked my light was off I knew the light we were gonna have our lights off because we we're gonna be saving battery power it was really cold anybody knows anything about scuba diving when you're 120 feet down you don't have a long time in those days we, we had to shoot all our underwater stuff on film we only had a, a two-minute roll on the film that's all you had in those days and uh, anyway, the crew doesn't turn up, and I panic. I'm trying to find my light, and as I let go of the table, there's a bit of a current going through the ship. I, I let go of the table. I start drifting off. I don't know where up and down is. I don't know where I am. By the time I got my light, turn my light on, it's completely foggy. I can't see anything. I've stirred up so much silk. And I finally found somewhere to arrest myself I grabbed a hold of another table but then I thought well how far away am I from the table that I was meant to be on so I'm flashing my light around looking for the buddy my mouth was getting dry just thinking about it when you when you breathe too fast with a regulator and you're diving you can actually start sucking in water you have to be very controlled with your breathing because there's a little diaphragm in that regulator and uh, thankfully I don't know how long my, my dog buddy was gone but thankfully he came back as he was going to come back and and he got me out of there, but he must have seen the panic in my eyes because I thought for a moment that was it, my life was done. And when I got out, I, that really changed my life. That was like a pivotal moment in my life where I'm gonna write down everything that I wanna do in my life before I die. And that list I decided would be the list that I would use to create a career. I don't know about y'all, but I wanna be Phil when I grow up. <laughs> if I could do even a 10th of the things he's accomplished and have just even a little bit of the fun that he's had, uh, I would be a very, very happy girl. And I am definitely trying, as we all are, I think. And anyway, so that was it from the LA Travel Show and our very first Holiday Makers episode. I hope you enjoyed. Like I said earlier, if you know of someone who's a holiday maker who just makes life feel more, more joyful and happy, and or somebody you've admired, you don't even have to know them, let me know. Uh, contact me on the lifesaholiday.com website. And you never know, maybe we can get them on the show. And I want to give you a heads up that we've got some really fun episodes coming. We've got um, some spas that I visited in the UK. We're going to be doing our spa along episodes. And right now with Brexit, UK is a great place to go spa because the pound, unfortunately for the British, but fortunately for us at the moment, the pound is really weak, which means your dollar, your spa dollar, goes farther. And while we were on hiatus, I have an episode about the little travel channel audition that I did. I actually auditioned for a, to host a show on the travel channel. It's like one of my dream things <laughs> in life, and uh, I can't wait to tell you all about it. So until next time, cheers to making every day feel like a holiday, and we'll see you soon. Bye! 
Don't forget, you can shop the show and get the 411 on this episode at lifesaholiday.com. That's H O L L A D A Y dot com. Meet Candy on Candy Holiday YouTube channel for more adventures. See you next time. Sleep.